Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we are going to learn about machine learning optimization algorithms. Yay! So, thus far in our exploration of machine learning, we have looked at gradient descent as a way to get our machine learning algorithm to be as accurate as possible. But there are other ways that we can do that. And so what we're going to do in this episode is review what gradient descent is and what it does and why. And we will talk about three different types of advanced optimization algorithms that you can use in your machine learning exploration. All right, so let's get started. If you have been following along this whole time, you might want to skip ahead uh, because we're going to review gradient descent and you might be super familiar with it. So go ahead and skip if you'd like to. And if you're like, I need a little bit of review or help. What is a cost function? What is gradient descent? Let's come along for the fun learning ride. Yay. Okay. So machine learning, it's all about taking data, finding patterns, and then using those patterns to make predictions for new types of data. And so to do that, we use the cost function. Da, da, da. So the cost function uses a variable j, which I really like, and it is a function of a bunch of different parameters, uh, theta. So the cost function measures the difference between a hypothesis or our guess function and the actual predict the actual data that we have. Um, so the smaller our cost function is, or the more we minimize it the more accurate our prediction is. Let's really quickly look at the hypothesis function. So the hypothesis function, h theta of x, might have a form of a line. So maybe it's theta not x plus theta one. Maybe it's a parabola, which would be theta not x squared plus theta one plus theta two. Or maybe it's something totally different, like we looked at in logistic regression. So one over one plus e to the theta x, where theta is a matrix. Um, it can have many different values, and often it's going to be a really, really, really long polynomial with a lot of different parameters theta. So <laughs> gradient descent is a way to minimize our cost function. And the way that we do that is first, we define our cost function, which is going to depend on the hypothesis function. It's basically um, a fancy average where we find the difference between the hypothesis function and the predicted value. And then we divide by the total number of data samples. So we're gonna have to define that in our code and then we find the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to each parameter theta, which looks like this. So for j equals zero, one, da, 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 all the way to n, where n is the total number of parameters in our cost function, or really in our hypothesis function. And so, um, if we were to write some pseudocode, what that looks like for gradient descent, grad descent, because I'm lazy, grad des. <laughs> okay, uh, what that looks like is that we are going to update our parameters based on this formula. So we take the previous value for that parameter and we subtract the partial derivative of j of theta. Oh my gosh parentheses and theta are drawn very similarly um, with respect to that parameter, and we multiply it uh, by a scaling factor, the learning rate or alpha. So the reason why this works, because if we were to plot the cost function as a function of theta, let's say our cost function looks like this. Um, let's say, ooh, different color. Let's say we start here because we randomly initialize our hypothesis function with some values of theta and that value happens to be up here. But our goal is to get down here because then um, we know that we've minimized our cost function, aka our predicted values 
are as close as they can be to the actual data values. So when we take the partial derivative, we get the tangent to the curve at that point. That's going to give us the slope of the line. And then we multiply that by the learning rate, which will help us um, take appropriate steps. Um, so let's say our new value in purple um, is down here. If we make a bigger learning rate, we might end up all the way down here. If we make one too small, we might end up too close. It'll take forever. Um, so I have a video on that. Check it out if you want to learn more. Um, so if the slope is negative, we're going to move down this way. Our uh, parameter value will get smaller. So we're going to go this way. Because if we go like this, we have a parameter, let's say it's three. And to get to here, our parameter value, I don't know, two. I'm making up these numbers just for illustrative purposes. Um, we want a smaller alpha. And if we happen to start up here, let's say this is one. Doo -doo -doo, drawing with left hand is hard. Um, we're going to get a positive slope, or sorry, a negative slope. Wow. Whew. Um, and here our slope is going to be positive, but we have a minus sign, so we move to the left. Here our slope is going to be negative, and so we're going to move to the right, which is good. That's what we want. We want to get to 2. We'll put 2 in purple because 2 is a happy, happy minimization value. Um, so that's gradient descent. That's how it works. Um, partials, yay! Calculus is useful. So... Um, why would you want to do anything different? Well, this can take a really long time because you have to do it for each parameter and then you have to do it many, 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 many more times um, because this can take a lot of steps um, and oftentimes your cost function plot versus the parameter is not going to be a nice, happy um, parabola. It's also, it's going to have multiple dimensions. Um, so this can take a really long time. So there are uh, three other optimization algorithms I want to show you. Um, so first we have gradient descent, um, which is what we have covered. There is also um, conjugate descent. I'm not going to go into these in detail, but I just want to uh, call them out so that you can look them up if you want more information. Um, we're going to use lots of fun colors. Okay, and then we also have um, one called BFGS. And lastly, we have another one called L-BFGS. Uh, these are statistical um, and uh, calculus techniques. These all have libraries, software libraries. So to write these yourself, you might need a PhD in mathematics or statistics, but to use the software libraries, you don't. So use libraries. Leverage the hard work of other people to make our lives easier. So these three are much more sophisticated than gradient descent. Um, why would we want to use those um, or why? Like, how does that help us? Well, number one, we don't have to manually pick a learning rate, kind of guess and check there. Uh, so that reduces the amount of guesswork that you have to do. Um, and these three are also often faster than gradient descent. But on the other hand, they're also more complex. And so if you have an application where it's really important for you to know everything that your code is doing, you want to go with gradient descent. Um, a situation like that might be if you are using machine learning for uh, very sensitive applications or situations where it's really important uh, for you to uh, have control over your machine learning application. Uh, for example, let's say you're using machine learning to try to detect cancerous tumors in images. Uh, you may want to know everything that your machine learning algorithm is doing so that you can very finely tune it. Um, and make sure that you get it as accurate as possible because both a false positive and a false negative are very bad. Um, but if you are, you know, doing a citizen science, I want to see if there's frogs or toads or other types of animals in my ecosystem just for fun. I'm totally fine to use a sophisticated algorithm that'll be faster, that'll help you get your data, and um, that will uh, do what you need it to do.
Okay, um, I hope that that is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions about gradient descent, the topics that we covered so far, um, or if there's specific stuff that you want me to cover in machine learning as we continue our exploration. We're gonna get into neural nets, yay, so fun. Okay, yay, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time, friends, bye.